Hello guys and welcome back to yet another ANC video. Today, I would like to clarify what will occur with Credit Suisse's short positions and total return swaps. Clearly, UBS has recently acquired Credit Suisse, but will swaps and short positions also be transferred to UBS? Will they be liquidated prior to the completion of the transaction, or will they be sold to a different bank? Therefore, stay tuned and let's earn some cash. And now I'll present the essential facts. Clearly, the Swiss government and the Swiss National Bank provided UBS with a multitude of incentives to finalize this deal. First is this enormous liquidity line. The Swiss National Bank has volunteered to facilitate the transaction with UBS. This is now effectively currency. UBS is able to draw if there is a bank run on UBS as well. Gavin tweeted that Switzerland's central bank has provided UBS with a liquidity line of more than $100 billion as part of its acquisition of Credit Suisse. Hence, if UBS2 faces a bank run or begins incurring huge losses, it can essentially withdraw an almost unlimited quantity of funds from the Swiss central bank. As previously mentioned, the government is also covering the first $9 billion of any losses that UBS incurs effectively paying UBS $6 billion to acquire Credit Suisse. Apparently, UBS legally paid $3 billion, but the first $9 billion of damages are covered. Hence, UBS is effectively acquiring Credit Suisse for free by receiving $6 billion in cash. In addition, as I alluded to earlier, $17 billion worth of debts have recently been totally cancelled resulting in nearly $23 billion worth of incentives for UBS to acquire Credit Suisse. Thus, there must be something horrifying in Credit Suisse's books. In addition, Jim Bianco stated that he thinks the central bank would honor the 54 billion Swiss francs they promised Credit Suisse on Thursday. On top of the $100 billion liquidity facility, the $54 billion bailout that Credit Suisse had already obtained is expected to be honored. Archigo's bullet swaps are a particularly intriguing aspect of this situation because they have been moved to Credit Suisse. The majority of these bullet swaps are obviously two-year swaps. Now, you may be asking yourself, Tom, did Archigo's fail roughly two years ago? And secondly, what types of exchanges did Archigo's conduct? Archigo's collapsed on March 26, 2021, to answer the initial question. The anniversary would occur on March 26. 2023. Many days from now. Hence, Archigo's swaps are obviously up for renewal. Due to the fact that these swaps are toxic, likely to expire, worthless, and come with a massive liability that UBS could not cover on its own, UBS effectively needs these additional sweeteners in the Credit Suisse agreement. And we also know that Archigo's shorted GameStop and AMC and was enormously over-leveraged long on other positions that are likely still open, still poisonous, and still poised to cause a massive headache. In addition, the UBS chairman recently stated that after acquiring Credit Suisse's positions, these long-dated positions in derivative swaps do not correspond with UBS's goals, and as a result, UBS is seeking to unwind these positions. Hence, this means to close them. Nevertheless, the term unwind does not necessarily indicate that UBS will close these investments. It simply indicates that UBS does not want them. They will either close out of these positions or attempt to unwind and offload them onto another bank, hedge fund, or market maker that is unaware of the situation. Yet, the primary response is that these investments have really been transferred from Credit Suisse to UBS. But UBS has no interest in them because it is not in their best interests. Hence, they are either seeking to liquidate their holdings, cover their swaps, and cover their shorts, or to transfer them to another bank, hedge fund, or market maker. As usual, sad yet honest tweets were posted. He stated that the chairman of UBS has now acknowledged that these swaps are level 3 financial transactions. Currently, there are three valuation measures applicable to financial products. You have access to levels 1, 2, and 3. This is more technical accounting but it simply means that Level 1 financial instruments have a quoted and traded price for a similar or identical Level 2 financial instrument. Level 2 prices can also be calculated and are readily visible, but they are not identical to Level 1 pricing. As Level 3 financial instruments are not based on visible market data, the value of these products is extremely difficult to calculate. Essentially, 
they are stating that it is extremely impossible to assess these swaps or short positions since they cannot model anything that would reveal the genuine worth of how hazardous they are. Due to the enormous number of synthetic shares, it is extremely difficult to predict what will occur during the AMC crunch, so they cannot comprehend how deep they are in the hole with these toxic positions. Yet, we do know that we are still holding them because Credit Suisse was also still holding them. Nonetheless, UBS is adamant about closing out of these short positions, and it may not be long before it realizes that the $9 billion in losses the government has committed to cover may not be enough. As previously stated, the value of these instruments is unobservable on the market. Hence, it is quite difficult for us to estimate how much liability they would incur if these positions were terminated, and they may therefore attempt to sell them to another bank market maker or hedge fund. Or, they may attempt to exercise the positions and close out of the short positions, crossing their fingers and hoping they don't become bankrupt. Nonetheless, it appears that investors perceive this risk to be much bigger than UBS estimates. And this is why credit default swaps have only begun to spiral out of control. According to a tweet from Bloomberg, investors view UBS as presenting a significantly larger risk. The cost of insuring UBS Group's debt, also known as credit default swaps for the subsequent five years, has increased by 63 basis points. These credit default swaps spiked to approximately 150 basis points in November and December but have since cooled to only 75 basis points. In the last few days, however, they have skyrocketed to 230 or 240 basis points. It appears that the market did not approve of UBS's acquisition of Credit Suisse, and the market believes that Credit Suisse did not get a fair enough deal, despite receiving $23 billion in incentives and a $150 billion backup facility. They stated that they initially attempted to enlist the cooperation of significant institutions. Then, they attempted to sell Silicon Valley Bank, but were unsuccessful. Now, they are meeting with Warren Buffett to request his assistance in saving the banking system. He added that this is the final thing we need to restore faith in the system, and he stated that it is becoming increasingly apparent that huge banks and funds will benefit from this. He stated that governments are desperate to limit the crisis, and do not wish to shoulder the responsibility, whilst investors are already searching for deals. It appears like the Fed and the government have no idea what to do, and they are attempting to get any bank to rescue any other bank without interfering too much. That appears to be a full replay of 2008, when the Fed and the government were days or even weeks behind real events. As previously stated, this may also be true for UBS. This may be a gross underestimation of Credit Suisse's actual hazardous liabilities and of the damage these liabilities can cause. Nonetheless, please let me know what you think in the comments section below. As always, gentlemen, be remembered to ring the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I submit a new video. Goodbye.